Today we're gonna to be unboxing the Flare 58. I just received this, haven't seen it at all, and I thought I'd film my initial impressions of opening this guy up. So let's do that. Now I'm really excited about this one guys. The Flare 58 is definitely an anticipated product. Uh, it's been all the hype on social media, and normally I don't get into that, but I definitely thought this looked very interesting. Very excited to dive into this and just share my thoughts and experiences with you on this. That being said, I'm gonna be comparing this to some other machines. Rather than doing a traditional review, I'm gonna compare it to some products that I use daily and some products that I respect in the industry. Things like the Pro 2 from Flare. All right, let's dive into this. Let's open up this box. This is pretty typical flare boxing. We've got just the brown box with their logo on the front. Nothing special here, but definitely worth mentioning. On the back, utilizing a standard barista portafilter of 58 millimeters. That's what really separates this machine apart from the other flare manual espresso machines is it uses a commercial portafilter, commercial size portafilter. Allows for seamless transitions from the shop to the home and vice versa. We'll see about that. All right, let's open this thing up. Let's get into this. All right, first thing we see is this is the drip tray, I believe. Gone are the days of the metal drip tray. Instead, we're left with a textured rubber drip tray. I mean, right off the bat, I noticed something different about this machine than any of the other flares. And that is this big electrical block right here. But we're gonna come back to this a little later on. They supply you with a pretty nice portafilter. This looks the same as an E61 group head portafilter. Gonna have to check that out. But if so, that means my Bianca's portafilter will work on this machine, which is awesome. Then we've got the group head. You can see right off the bat, this thing's got an electrical cord hanging out the back. This does have some preheating abilities. In fact, that's what this guy is all about. You don't need to preheat your brew chamber. It's all electronically done, which I think the manual espresso geeks are gonna be up in arms about. Some people are gonna love it. Some people are gonna hate it. I hate it. For me, who's somebody who doesn't really care to have to preheat a brew chamber on top of my kettle or inside my kettle, this is just, oh, smart flare, so smart. Really stoked about this guy. I am the smart. Then we've got our brew gauge. And yeah, nothing really different there. It's, it is covered in a black rubber, I guess, to match the rest of the product and it's got a plastic coating on that, but we've also got ourselves a little tamper. I'll be quite honest, this is neat that they've supplied a decent tamper. I mean, most espresso machines won't supply a tamper with their machines. Often it's a little plastic thinky thing, so this is definitely better than most machines. But will I be using this? Probably not. I'll probably end up using a nicer tamper and that's one of the nice things about this guy is that you can use all your 58 millimeter accessories on the Flare 58. Okay, then we've got our electrical cords and we've got our controller and we're gonna, we're gonna put this all together and I'm gonna show you guys what this is all about. And then we get to the good stuff here, which is the actual device itself. It comes in two parts. Okay, Flare. Listen, normally my brew bar is all matte white, but I think I'm gonna have to make space for some black equipment on my brew bar, because this, this looks awesome. does the base. Like I said, today we're not gonna be reviewing this in this video. Unboxing videos are all the rage. Hey, I love a good unboxing video. Now, who is this espresso machine for? Well, I think this is gonna be an interesting device for some people. I think for the person who's been holding out on an espresso machine because they want the ability to brew great, great espresso, but they just don't wanna spend $1,500 on a dual boiler, they want something that has the ability to flow profile, pressure profile. I think this guy is gonna be very interesting for people in that category. Somebody who wants a nice quality device that'll last for a while, doesn't care about steaming. That's a big thing. If you don't need to steam, something like the Flare is gonna be a great option for so many people. Holy Toledo! Also in this box, we've got a little quick start guide in Flare fashion. They give you this nice laminated paper so that you can keep this around your brew bar. It won't get destroyed by coffee. Now, this is a great guide, but we're gonna throw this away for now. And I wanna just dive right into this. Let me get this box out of the way. She's not small, is she? This is a big manual brewer, but I think it's not too big. Like I definitely think, especially with the handle down. Oh yeah. Initial impressions, this is a beautiful device. Okay, I think the only thing left for us to do is to pull a shot and let's do that. This right here is my brew bar. And I thought 
weed pull shot of the Flare 58. But I've completely changed my brew bar. As you can see, my espresso machine's gone. So I thought I'd try out this Flare 58 for the next four weeks exclusively. No dual boilers, no single boilers, just manual espresso. And then I'm gonna come back. By the time you're watching this video, I'm already working on some comparisons for future videos. Oh, I'm so excited. All right, let's pull a shot. amazing. Here's what I've been noticing with the Flare 58 so far. Again, this isn't a review. More thoughts to come on this machine, but just getting it out of the box and pulling some shots, it's pulling fantastic espresso. Now, the Flare 58 isn't cheap, and so I'm really excited to compare this to the Pro 2 and to other machines like the Gaja Classic or the Bianca, because I think those are great machines to compare it to. I think the Bianca will be fun. Flow profiling versus manual espresso. And then the Gaja is something in its very own price range. Should you buy a semiotic espresso machine or a manual espresso machine? And so I'm really excited to dive into that. So if you don't wanna miss those, be sure. I, I don't wanna beg, I know this is the, the YouTube thing to do, but it really does help me out as a channel. So if you haven't yet, like right now, go hit that subscribe button. It'll take you two seconds to do that. And hit that like button down below. It lets YouTube know that this is something that's worth watching. I know, those are all the youtube -y things. I'm sorry. I do have to say those things though. Hopefully one day, I don't. So we will see you guys in the next one. So in the meantime, continue to brew great coffee. Continue to brew at home. Peace. We'll see you guys next time. Thank you.